what I'm talking about. Look at it. Today, what today is? Sunday, Monday, today, Wednesday. All right, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm good. Let's, let's do this, y'all. Wednesday. Let me see. Yesterday was Tuesday. Today, Wednesday. Let's get it in. Y'all know we do this every day. All that old plane. Y'all gonna trip out today, right? We going back, we are gonna touch back on yesterday. We are gonna break this stuff down. Like I say, a lot of stuff, This, a lot of stuff we've been taught in these churches, I'm gonna show it to you in this book. So don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. Don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. And the thing is, this is the thing, you know, coming off of Sunday, right? Coming off of Sunday, which was Resurrection Sunday, everybody ran the church for Easter and all this and that. And, Say, man, let me tell y'all something. Get to know God and get to know God for yourself. Because a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff we being taught, it ain't being taught right. I'm telling y'all. So that's why we get in the Bible every day. That's why we go to God every day. As I say, I ain't been to nobody Bible college. I ain't been to nobody seminary. But guess what? I go to God. So when I go to God, I'm like, say, God, bro, how does go, God? Give me an understanding of this and that. And he give it to me. That's why nobody can't run out there. That's why no scholar can't run out there. The bishop can't run out there. The pastor. Because guess what? I go to God and get my information. And this is what I present to y'all. Just like they've been telling us. Okay. They say that he coming back He coming back for the church. Show me that in the Bible. Show me that in the Bible. Well, he's coming back for the church, right? But watch this. I told y'all. Them last 365 days we did, from March last year to March this year, God was taking us through a detox. He was detoxing us of all that bad teaching and stuff we learned in the church. Watch this. I'm going to take you in the sixth chapter of Revelation. We're going to go in the sixth chapter of Revelation. We're going to deal with the fifth seal. We already done dealt with the red horse, the white horse, the black horse, the pale horse. That's the first four seals. We're going to deal with the fifth seal. The fifth seal deals with what? All of those who had been martyred. All right. Yesterday, I showed you after Jesus was resurrected, he didn't go straight to no heaven. He didn't go straight to no heaven. When Jesus came out of that grave, he was walking, he was talking, he was sleeping, he was eating. He was doing everything he did before he went in that grave. He get around Peter. He running in with Peter and them, like I showed you. He told Peter, Peter, do you love me more than you love these? What was he referring to? He was referring to the fish. Why? Because Peter was a fisherman. Okay, that was his livelihood. That's how, that was his profession. So he was asking Peter, do you love me more than you love your profession, more than you love your livelihood? So now my thing is, hold up, God, hold up, God, 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 wait. If Jesus died, he was crucified, died, was buried, how he remembered what Peter did when he rose from the dead, right? Okay. I'm going to take you in the sixth chapter of Revelation. For the Bible says all of those who had been martyred. For preaching the word and teaching the word of God, now they are in heaven under the altar of God, waiting for what? The revenge of things that people did to them in heaven, on earth. Wait, God, if these people in heaven, by you and they died, how do you know what happened down here? Show me in the Bible where he coming back for a church. That's the first thing. Okay? Now, a lot of the stuff we've been taught in these churches, see, bro, it don't go like that. It don't go like that. I'm going to show you. We're going to come out of the 6th chapter of Revelation. We're going to walk that. The ninth through the 11th verse. We're going to go in Ephesians, the 5th chapter. We're going to walk that 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30th verse. For Jesus said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Stop. The church was already in Christ. Go back to the book of Genesis. God formed man from the dust. Put man to sleep and he created the woman. The woman was already well in the man. If it's in the Old Testament, people, it's in the New Testament. I'm going to take you in the 18th chapter of Jeremiah and tie it all together. All together. But in the 5th chapter of Ephesians, we're going to break this thing down. But they've been telling us, wait, he coming back for a church with no spot and no stop. Get an understanding of these scriptures, people. They're just telling us that and we run out there quoting without having a full understanding of what we're saying. Okay. Go in Revelation, the 21st chapter. For the for John say, and the angel that had one of the seven plagues, which is in the 16th chapter, talking about the seven bold judgments, that angel is showing John the bride, the lamb, 
bride. Okay, so this is me. Like I say, we, we on some new stuff. God and took us to a whole nother level. This is me. I talk to God. You may not talk to God like that. That's between you and God. So I'm like, hold up, God. What's happening with all this? And when I go in the book of Revelation, you open it to me like this, right? I got that. So if that's the bride's lamb, that's the lamb bride, okay, which is the church, okay. Why they keep telling us that Jesus is coming back for a church with no spot and wrinkle? He says, stop. Go back and read what Paul was writing. He was writing to the church at Ephesus to let them know how a man should treat his wife. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He says, stop. Go back to that 26 and 27 verse and really look at it. It talks about glory. It talks about the washing. No spots, no wrinkles. It's water baptism. No spots, no wrinkle. It's conversion. No spots, no wrinkle. It's the washing of the word of God. So where are we getting this other foolishness from in these churches? Say, bro, see what I told y'all? I'm going to show it to you in the book. I'm going to break it down to you from the book. So where they getting this from? I don't know, bro. I don't know. On some real talk, I don't know. So when you run out there, this is why it hurts me to my heart to see us running in these churches and get caught up in all that foolishness and it don't go like that. As I always say, if I'm lying, come show me. I don't care who you are. If I'm lying, come show me. Because I'm going to take you in the book of Genesis and show you how God created man. Boom! And then when the man and grabbed the woman, I'm going to take you in the book of Ephesians and show you how the woman, the church, is already in Christ. This is why he told them. This is why all this week we're looking at what happened prior to, this, to the death, burial, and resurrection. What happened during the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And what happened after he rose? Why? Because we ran in church. We ran in church with somebody. Oh, he rose. He rose. He rose. Okay, now he rose. Now what? Now what? Now that he has risen, now what? Because you've been telling me that for the last 50 Sundays when I go to church on an Easter Sunday, you told me that. He have risen. Now what? Now what? What happened after that? What happened after that? Because y'all done gave us all his erroneous teachings in these churches. Say, bro, can somebody please start telling the truth? Anybody. I don't care who you are. Can you please start telling the truth? Because guess what? When we go through these scriptures, wait, Jesus, you rose from the dead, and you remember what Peter did you before you died. Now you're running around, and you putting Peter in check for something he did for you before you died. Say, if you love me. Why? Because Peter denied him three times. So now he got to confess three times. He got to repent. This is why he said, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Because of what Peter did. Got that. Go in the sixth chapter of Revelation. We're going to read the scriptures. For the Bible says all of those who had been martyred. Now they're waiting for the revenge of God on the earth. So they ask God. Say, God, how long we got to wait? How long we going to sit around here waiting for you go handle your business on earth, God? Wait. If y'all died. And y'all in heaven by God, how y'all know what happened down here on earth? Well, see, we done cold played y'all. You can't talk to God like that. And you shouldn't ask God. But the Bible says, he that lack wisdom, let him ask. So if I'm lacking wisdom, say, God, how does this go, God? Break this thing down to me, God. Because guess what? Soon we go in that, soon we go in that 18 chapter of Jeremiah, going to blow your mind. 18 chapter. The powder going to blow your mind. So Jeremiah, because the people didn't want to listen to Jeremiah, because the people felt a certain way about Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, God, no, don't, don't accept their repentance, God. God, let this happen to their children. Let this happen. All of Jeremiah, bro, get out your feelings, Jeremiah. See, that's what happened with a lot of us. Say, bro, when God give it to me to give it to you, I give it to you. What you do with it, that's your business. If you don't want it, that's your business. How you do it, that's your business. Why? Because that's your relationship between you and God. My thing is, say, bro, don't be lying to me about that Bible. That's it. That's all I got to say. If you're going to give it to me, give it to me real. So when you go to tagging me in, listening to, my, listening to your pastor, listening to your bishop, say, bro, I ain't about to listen to nobody lying to me. 
on some real talk. Now, if you won't do that, that's on you, baby. On some real talk. I'm going to tell you what the word of God say, and not just tell it to you. I'm going to show it to you the way God has given it to me. Not them. Not how he's giving it to me. Like I tell you, I ain't sat in no class and learned none of this. I ain't sat in no seminary or Bible study. I go to God. God, what's happening with this, God? God, watch this. Watch this. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's all right, baby. It just hurt me to my heart to see how they've been playing y'all in these churches. And y'all running by. Oh, man, 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 man. Hey, hey, hey. Say, brother, don't go like that. That don't go like that, baby. Well, if Jesus be lifted up, Jesus said, if I be sanctified. So you, what you calling on Jesus for? Jesus said, I got to go. Jesus said, well, Jesus told Mary, don't touch me, Mary, baby. What you touching me for? Stop clinging to me, man. How y'all going to get this Holy Spirit? How y'all going to get this next ministry and y'all holding on to me? John the Baptist said, I have to decrease so his ministry can increase. If my ministry with water baptism don't decrease, how can the ministry of that fire, baptism of that fire, increase? But yet we stand in the pulpit. Pastor got to decrease. So Jesus could, man, go ahead with that foolishness. It don't go like that. It don't go like that. But we so emotional. We get caught up in our feelings. Watch this. Come here, book. Get y'all something to drink, bitch. See, them, like I say, these next 365 days, God taking us to a whole nother level. Stop running in these churches letting these people play y'all. I don't care who they are. Better yet, tell your bishop, tell your pastor, come learn something so he can stop giving you that bad information. Come here. Come here. Revelation. <laughs> Get you something to drink, baby. It's going to be a minute. I ain't going to be no. I'm going to be a real show. I have, I, have, I have a meeting with my deacons. I have to do a virtual wedding. I got a virtual wedding to do. I have another home visit. I mean, say, bro, one thing for sure, two things for certain, they're going to stop lying to us about this Bible on some real talk. So, this, I mean, this is this, me, y'all, for real, all the way. I got an Old Testament and a New Testament, right? I got these people running around talking about the law. These people talking about the Torah. These people talking about the Pentateuch. These people talking about this and that. Okay, I got that. But then I got these people running around talking about they Baptist, they Catholic, they Pentecostal, they this, that, that. I got that. But yet these people need people beefing, right? Okay. But when I read that Bible, right? It started with Abraham, right? Abraham had two sons, right? Ishmael and Isaac, right? Okay. So you either running off of Ishmael or you running off of Isaac, but it all started with Abraham, right? So what a problem at? What a problem at? If you won't believe how Ishmael rode, I got that, babe. If you won't believe how Isaac rode, I got that. But it all come out of Abraham. So what's the problem? Why we as believers believe it. If you won't call him Yahshua, call him Yahshua. You won't call him Yahweh, call him Yahweh. You won't call him Jesus, call him Jesus. Whatever you won't call him, that's you. That's why it's called personal relationship. You won't make me, how you gonna make me call him what you call him? I, that's my dude. You, you call him Jesus, I call him my dude. What's the difference? Wait, what's the difference? He call him Jesus, he call him Yahshua, he call him Yahweh, he call him what's the difference? What's the difference? You know what the difference is? What we know about him and how we serve him. Come in Revelation. Come in Revelation. All that other stuff. Jibby, jibby, jab. Watch this. And see, this is the thing, people. For so many years, they told us, don't read Revelation. Revelation scary. Revelation gonna drive you crazy. All right, okay. Well, I must have been a crazy man because I read it. And I didn't just read it. I studied it. Okay, you won't run it. And guess what, people? That's where the information is in the book of Revelation. But well, Pastor Mike, when people die, I, let me tell you something. When you die, only God knows whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. I don't know that. I don't know that. So I would never stand at no home going and say to be absent in the Bible. I don't know that. I don't know where you're going. But I do know what happens with these people. I do know that. When I go into 20 chapter of Revelation, I know what happens to those people. Now, where you're going, that's where you ain't going. Why? Well, this person here could have lived like hell. But guess what? They knew God. They knew God. And God forgave them. This person right here ran the church every Sunday. Every time the doors open. But yet, God going to tell them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Why? Because it's two type of people. Those that did to the least of them and those that did not. So what all this other stuff for? Huh? 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 Come here. 
Come here, Revelation. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna run this Bible. Watch this. In Revelation, the ninth verse, sixth chapter, ninth verse. Watch this, people. Revelation. We done went through the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, right? Now we just scratched the surface on the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse. We're gonna go back over those. Why? And when we deal with those first four seals, we're gonna get in depth. This is the fifth seal. Watch this. We know that the seals are well. They are on the book. But the book, in order for the book to be open, the seals got to come up off of the book. Now, this is the fifth seal that's going to come up the book. We still have two more seals. We know that that sixth seal is going to be a great catastrophe. We know that the seventh seal, with that seventh seal come off the book, it opens the first trumpet judgment, which starts what? The seven years of tribulation. Watch this. Spider bit. <laughs> Revelation 6, chapter 9, verse 6. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. Okay? Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? How long, O Lord? The people who died, who was on earth, who died is now saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Say, bro, how y'all know what happened with y'all? Y'all dead. How y'all know this stuff? But guess what? Nobody really teaching us this book, people. They've been playing with us with this book. So a see. So a see. Call on Jesus. All this. Say, bro. All right, now what? He rose, now what? That's what we're going to be. We're going to walk this thing. We're going to walk from that grave because it was 40 days after he rose. 40 days after he rose, he walking and talking and putting them on top of game. See, on that 40th day, the Bible said he ascended. He ascended. Now, prior to that, he told him, say, bro, chill out. Y'all going to receive the Holy Ghost. And after you receive the Holy Ghost, then you're going to have power. Well, yet we run out here with these songs. Oh, I got Holy Ghost power. What that said in the Bible? What that said in the Bible? He say no. You gonna receive the Holy Ghost. Then after you receive the Holy Ghost, then you gonna have power. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Watch this. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, "How long, O Lord, holy and true?" Does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And the white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were shall be fulfilled. So God said, said babe, don't worry about it. I'm going to deal, deal with them fools on that earth. But I, they have some more that's coming. Y'all not the only ones. Y'all have some more brothers and sisters that's going to get killed by this antichrist. Just chill out. I'm, 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 but I might think, hold up, God. How do you know what's going on on earth? And they did. That was the first question I asked God. But God, they told me, when you open the sky, then we're going to be resurrected. God said, Mike, show me that in the Bible. Wait. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we automatically become resurrected. He said, yes. He said, yes. This is why when he come out of the grave and he seen them, he told Mary, don't touch him because they wanted to continue to cling on to him. Let me go, baby. I got to go. But he told Thomas to touch him because Thomas was always doubting. He said, Mike, it was a difference in the two languages. And that's what they're not breaking down to y'all when they talk. That's why I tell y'all, it's a difference between preaching and teaching. Watch this. Come here, Ephesians. Jeremiah, I'm coming. Genesis, I'm coming. Come here, Ephesians. Hold on, hold on, hold on. While we running around here with all this jibby jibby jab in these churches, as I stated, if he coming back for a church, 
Show it to me in the book. Show it to me in the book. But you know what we tell y'all? Oh, he's coming back. And he's coming back for a church with no spot, no wrinkle. Show it to me in the Bible. I don't care who y'all. Come show it to me in this book. But yet, that's what we tell y'all. And y'all believe that. Can somebody show it to me in the book? I don't care who y'all. Show it to me in this book. Say, bro, please stop lying to us. For real, bro, please. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ephesians, I need you, babe. Watch this. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. I'm going to start at 23. Watch this. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Stay focused on that. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, who? The church. Subject unto who? Christ. Watch this. So that the wives be to their own husband in everything. Watch this. See, we're going to pimp y'all with that, but watch this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. First of all, first of all, how did Christ love the church? First, that's first. How did Christ love the church? That's the first thing. Okay, so you're going to tell me, love my wife like Christ loved the church. First of all, I got to learn how Christ loved the church. I don't know how Christ loved the church, so how am I going to love her like Christ loved the church? That's first. Watch this. Verse 26 breaks it down. Watch this. That he might, that he might set apart. Who is he? The husband of Christ. I'm giving the husband understanding of the church, but I'm using Christ. That he, okay, Christ. That he, the husband. Watch this. That he may set apart and cleanse it. Who? The wife or the church? Christ, the church. The husband, his wife, that he may set apart and cleanse it with the washing of the word, with the washing of water by the word. So, God, where are they getting all this other foolishness from that he's coming back for a church and we got to run around the church and we got to high five people and the breakthrough. Where they get that from, God? Where they get that from? Where they get that from? Because it's showing out in this book. And we run the church and we believe that. And we hollering and we cutting the food. But the minute some adversity come, the minute a dilemma come, the minute a situation or a challenge come, we fall apart. Well, where all that foolishness you was running around in the church doing? That didn't work? That don't work now? Watch this. Verse 27. That he may present it to himself a glorious church. Who? The husband of Christ. Christ. That he may present it. But it has to go through what? The washing of water by the word. How many of us really know the word of God? Not no jibby jibby jab. Not no cliche. Not all that foolishness. If you take one step, God will take two. If you sow, God going to bless you. That's a lie. But the Bible says he'll cause you to reap where you have not sown. So stop lying. Say, watch this. That he may present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. So why am I going to lie to you and tell you that he's coming back for a church without spots without wrinkles, without blemish. When Paul is writing this, Paul is giving us an understanding of how the husband should treat the wife the same way Christ treats the church. But Paul breaks it down, letting us know that the church is already in Christ, just like that woman was already in Adam. Say, bro, wow. I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 28, so all men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that love his wife, love himself. So Christ, you love yourself. So you automatically love the church. 
Because the church was in you just like Eve was in Adam, right? Right. So how you gonna come back for what's already in you? Watch this. Come here, Revelation. Come here, Revelation. The book we don't know. Come here, Revelation. That's why we tell you anything. Come here, Revelation. Watch this. Revelation 21 and 9 says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues. 16th chapter of Revelation, we're going to go through the seven bowl judgments. This is one of the angels. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And talk with me. The angel is talking with John. And talk with me saying, Come high. Come up higher. Come up here. And I will show you the bride. I will show you the bride. I will show you the bride. The lamb's wife. Hello. Hello. Watch this. This going to blow you. Verse 10 says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Wait, 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 the Holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, right? I got that. Watch this. Verse 11 says, having the glory of God in her lights. Wait, wait. Having the glory of God in her lights. Who? The bride. The lamb's wife. But God. How you wait, wait, Jesus, wait, Jesus. And that's where we're going to be these next 365 days. You know why? Because they've been cold playing us in these churches. How you going to give me the Bible when the Bible says precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here and a little there, and you don't know Revelation? And you're not telling me nothing about this book of Revelation. How you going to line, line up on line? Because it all go together. How you going to give me precept upon precept when it all goes together? How you going to give me a little here and a little there? You don't even know it. Cold game. But this is the bride right here. In the, 19, in the 21st chapter of Revelation. That's why it talks about the gates. That's why it talks about the foundation. The gate represents how they was able to come in. And be saved. Why? Go back in the 16th chapter of Matthew. For Jesus said, And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Why? Because in the 20th chapter, God gonna set this whole place on fire. And when he set it on fire, he'll come down, boom, the new Jerusalem. It's not that what the Bible said. It's not that what the Bible said. So all that we're gonna go to heaven and say, bro, can y'all finish giving me the story? That's what I wanna know. I wanna know the rest of the story. Because that's what y'all been telling us in these churches. For a dollar, bro. You've been selling us out to get a dollar and ain't been teaching us really nothing. Let the truth be told. Watch this. Come at Revelation 20 chapter. This is after the millennium. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to start. Let's start right here, Pastor Mike. Let's start right here. Revelation 27 says, and when the thousand years are expired, this is after millennium. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Why? Because after the battle on Megiddon, 16th chapter of Revelation, we go through the 17th and 18th chapter of Revelation, we see that he's going to destroy Babylon in one hour. But it's the battle that's going to take place when he put down on his robe in the 19th chapter of Revelation and he come down and wreck this place. That's his second coming. That's his second coming. Why? That barren resurrection was his first. Why? Because he told Pilate, I came for this hour. What hour? That's why I was born. The day I was born, the clock started. What clock? The end of the world. Watch this. Verse 8. Go back to 7. And when a thousand years expire, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners Four quarters of the earth. 
God and Maga. I'm going to take you in the book of Ezekiel and I'm going to break down Maga. Okay? But we're going to do that sometime during this week so you won't lose focus. Watch this. To gather them together to battle. To gather them together to battle. What? Watch this. The number of whom is the sand of the sea. Verse 9. And they went up to breadth of the earth and compassed the camps of the saints about in the beloved city. What beloved city? What beloved city? The New Jerusalem. Watch this. And fire came down from God. And fire came down from God. Revelation 20 and 9. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. God said, say, bro, I played with y'all before. I'm not about to play with y'all. Sitting down the fire, boom, that's a wrap. I got time for all that foolishness. Watch this, verse 10. And that devil deceived them that was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets, where the beast and the false prophet, the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Oh, so I ain't got time. Got time to play with it. After the millennium, when he loose again, God said he's just going to sit down the fire. Boom. Set this whole place on fire. That's called earth. And the new Jerusalem, the new city, is going to come out of heaven. Boom. This why, this why I be like, say, bro, why y'all playing these people? Why y'all pipping these people talking about give some money to build the kingdom when the kingdom of God is already built? Cold gay. Cold gay. Cold gay. When we need to be teaching the people so they can make it into the kingdom that's going to come down because it's already built. This is why Jesus in the 6th chapter of Matthew, when he taught him the hour for the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth and it is already being done in heaven. This is why when he gets to the end of the chapter, he tells them what? Seek the kingdom of God first. And his righteousness and all this other stuff is gonna be added. But yet we co playing y'all. We co pimping y'all. Talking about some kingdom building. When the kingdom is already built, will you make it into the kingdom? Because as Matthew say, it's only two people. Those that did it and those that didn't do it. And those that did not do it, he gonna say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Why? Because we running out there with all that jibby jibby jab, sitting in these churches, getting cold played. Let me tell you something, on real talk, look at the church. Look at the church. Stop today. Where's the church today? We don't know. We don't know. Let's go back 30 years. The last past 30 years, been cold pimp game, number prosperity. Nothing but prosperity. And the only one that prospers is the one that teaches it. What do you have compared to what they have that been teaching you the prosperity? Cold game. Go to the church before that. Go to the church before that. What was the church? Baptist. Go back to the church before that. What was the church? Pentecostal. We done been Pentecostal. We done been, we done been Baptist. Then they came with this full gospel foolishness. Now what are we now? Now what are we? Now what are we? And don't have a clue of God. Don't have a clue of Christ. But yet, here come Resurrection Sunday. We done stood up there with all that noise. What do we really know about Christ? What do we really know about the water and the washing? What do we really know? God said, and the husband should cleave to his wife. And the wife should cleave to her husband. In other words, say, bro, let all them other people go. Y'all got to become one. You got to cleave to Christ and become one. But Christ said, I got to go. But I'm going to leave you another comforter, Mike. And the comforter going to lead you in truth. And the comforter going to give you the all again. But you're trying to hold on to me. How you going to hold on to what I've given you and you holding on to me? Because they say if you be lifted up, Mike, that ain't what I was talking about. The scripture said, if I be lifted up, but I was talking about crucifixion. I was letting them know how I was going to die. But they told me to call on you, Jesus. For what? What you calling on me for, Mike? But, but, because they told me. Okay, show me in that book where you need to be calling on me, Mike. Um. 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 
Uh, show it to me. Show me in this book where we need to be calling on Jesus. That's how they've been playing us. So we run around the church, G, 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 Jesus. No, you need to get to know God and get to know God for yourself. And you need to get to know that spirit of God that's in you, the spirit of God that dwells in you. You need to get to know the one that's in you so you'll be able to stand up on anything and anybody and say, greater is he that's in me. I don't care what the doctor say. I don't care what the judge say. I don't care what a Negro or his mammy say. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God is in you, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, but God ain't nobody been giving it to us like that, God. You know why? Because all of them go to the same institutions. So in Bible college, man teach them to teach y'all that, Mike. In seminary, man taught them to teach y'all that. But what did y'all, did y'all ever come to me? How many of y'all come to me? But, but God, miss me with the butt, Mike. How many of y'all come to me? Come here, Jeremiah. Watch this. Come here, Jeremiah. Watch this. Watch this. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Watch this. I'm going to start verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Jeremiah, go down there to the potter house. I'm going to give you the game. Jeremiah, watch this. Then I went down to the potter house, and behold, he wrought the work on the wheels. And the vessels that he had made of clay and mar in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you, so are I in my hand, O house of Israel. So if I'm in God's hand, if I'm in God's hand, don't lie to me and tell me, oh, your breakthrough coming. No, I already got my breakthrough. I'm in God's hand. Oh, you're going you gonna to have this. But stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. I'm in God's hand. God got me. How you know? Cold game. But we fall for that. Why? Because they play on our sentiments. They play on our emotions. I heard somebody say, Pastor Mike, I used to feel guilty about not going to church because I had nothing to put in church. See how the church played you? I don't care if I ain't got a nickel. I come to hear a word. You going to give me a word? So I got to pay for this? I got to come here and pay for this? I don't have nothing, baby. But then again, you know what? Pastor, say, Deacon. Pastor say, come as you are, right? And that's y'all slogan in this church, come as you are? Yes, come as you are. Okay. Well, I'm broke. And I came broke. So now, that don't work. That don't. You say, come as you are. I came broke. I ain't got nothing. I don't have nothing. So I can't get a word because I don't have nothing. Say, bro, Christ wasn't like that. Can you imagine the husband telling his wife, look, baby, I can't do nothing for you. You ain't got nothing, I can't do nothing for you. When the Bible says love her as you love yourself. So if you don't have nothing, you ain't going to do nothing for yourself. Cold gang, cold gang, cold gang. And you know what? They've been playing that game on us for the minute, for a good minute. Watch this. Says the Lord, as the clay is in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant shall I speak concerning the nation, concerning the kingdom, to pluck it up, and to pull it down, and to destroy it? Verse 8. And if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do to them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. Scores doing, not no man. Man could never do that. But, 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 but. People, until you get to know God for yourself, man gonna continue to play you. Watch this.
Look what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah 18. Watch this. Jeremiah 18. 18 and 18. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. What? 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 Let us attack Jeremiah. Why y'all want to attack Jeremiah? For the law shall not perish from the priests, nor counsels, nor wives, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us smite him with a tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. It's been happening, bitch. It's been happening all about. But you know what you ain't gonna say? Oh, don't listen to Pastor Mike. You're right. Don't listen to me. Listen to God. Don't believe Pastor Mike. You're right. Don't believe Pastor Mike. Believe the word of God. I. And I would have said Jeremiah. Come here, Jesus. Ephesians 5 and 29. For no man ever hated his own flesh. For no man ever hated his own flesh. But nourish and cherish it. Even as the Lord, the church. Even as the Lord, the church. You know what's so cold about this game? I'm going to tell you. Wherever God makes... Wherever God gives a vision, he makes provision. That's what I'm going to tell you, right? Okay. Where God gave you the vision to start that business, right? He's going to give you what you need for it. Okay. If it works for you, it should work for me. If God gave me the vision to start this church, he's going to give me the provision. Isn't that what I told you for your business? Oh, don't, don't, don't they tell y'all that the church is a business? Where if it worked for you, it should work for me. But I don't want it to work for me. I want it to work for you. But I want you to give me your money while you wait for the provision of God for your business. Man, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Cold game. Okay, you got that. Tell me, okay, grandmother died, right? Grandma know what's going on? Grandma can hear me? Grandma can see me? Tell me that. But come on, don't come with that. Don't come with that. Because Jesus did it. Jesus died. Jesus rose. Jesus was walking and talking. Jesus remember what Peter did. Don't come with that. I go in that sixth chapter of Revelation. All of those who had been martyred, they waiting for their revenge. They waiting for God to avenge what happened to them on earth. So don't come with that. Say, bro, can somebody answer these real questions? Not all these old jibby jibby jack. Why? Because we're going to go in the book of Acts. And when we go in the book of Acts, the book of Acts started the early church. So in the book of Acts, Peter and John didn't have a full understanding of what was going to happen in the ending of time. So now the people is selling their stuff. They're giving their stuff away. Why? Because they thought the world was going to end during that time. Oh, we're going to walk this thing, babe. We're going to walk this thing. We're going to walk this thing. We're going to walk this thing. So as the people was giving and selling and doing everything, the Bible say everybody had as they needed. This church today, this church today, we run the church like empire. Only Lucius and, and, and Cookie and the family good. What about all the other people? What about all the other people? Bible, baby. But yet, we run the church suddenly, and you're going to tell me he rose. He rose for you to handle me like that? No, baby. He's going to take care of the church. He's going to take care of the church. Why? Because the church came out of him. How do I know? Because he told him, y'all wait right here in Jerusalem. Y'all wait. Y'all wait. When it come, boy, y'all going to know what happened. Why? Because when the Holy Spirit came, that was the first fruit. That was God's first fruit. The spirit that Jesus told them, the comforter that Jesus told them that would come. Why? Because even after he rose from the dead, the Bible says he blew on them. He blew on them. 
and they received the power, but not the power that they was going to receive when the Holy Spirit came and dwelt within them. He was still, after the death, the burial, and the resurrection, he was still preaching, teaching, and breaking it down to them. Not today, not today, not today. I'm going to run cold gang. All I want is the truth. Just tell me the truth. That foolishness, say, bro, it don't go like that. Okay, according to this book, when we get in this book of Revelation, he said, don't add to it and don't take away from it. Else he gonna take your name out of the book. Okay, I got that. That's the 22nd chapter. Okay, but when I go in that 20th chapter, he gonna pull out these books at the great white throne. Okay, do you really know about the great white throne of judgment? Because if you know about the great white throne of judgment, that means you have already accepted the great salvation. This is why the church have all these doors. The north, the south, the east, the west. Isn't that what it said in the 21st chapter of Revelation? When it breaks down the church, the bride, the lamb of the bride, the bride's lamb. Come on, man. See, bro, we done ran some cold game on y'all in these churches. Boom. And it's all by So quick to get in our feelings. Come back here, Jeremiah. Come back here, Jeremiah. I'm going to show you what happens when you get in your feelings. There, 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 Jeremiah got in his feelings. Come here, Jeremiah. Jeremiah got in his feelings. Come here, Jeremiah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Jeremiah 18 and 19. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that cannot, that, that content with me. Vert, come here, glass. I don't want, I don't want, vert. Watch this, watch this. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that content with me. Shall evil be, shall evil be repaid for good, for they have digged a pit for my soul. This is Jeremiah talking. This is Jeremiah talking. This is Jeremiah talking. They have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them, and they turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore deliver up their children to the phantom, and pour out their blood by the forces of the sword. Hold up, Jeremiah. You a man of God. How you gonna switch out on these people like this, Jeremiah? Because they didn't want to listen to you, Jeremiah. Because they felt like, hey, bro, Christ said they hated me. They're going to hate you. This is why in the 16th chapter of John, he was letting them know, say, bro, y'all going to be persecuted. The church was birthed out of persecution. Not, no, not, not you giving. Not you getting played. Not you getting pimped. The church was birthed out of persecution. But yet we don't tell y'all that. We rather play y'all. All through the Bible, all through it, he went through persecution. The world don't want this going on. This is why this was happening to Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, kill him. Jeremiah said, send him back him. Jeremiah said, God, don't let him repent. Get him. God like, hold up, Jeremiah, baby. Calm down. Jesus never worked out of his emotions. He always worked out of intelligence. Jeremiah, bro, you cold dude. <laughs> Jeremiah said, kill him. <laughs> Jeremiah said, let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. For they have digged a pit to take me in the snares of my feet. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquities, neither blot out their sins from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of their anger. Come on, come on, Jeremiah. Come on, Jeremiah, baby. Jeremiah was old cry baby. He was a cry baby prophet. See that Isaiah? Isaiah was a cold gangster. Jeremiah, he was old cry baby prophet. See, see that Ezekiel? He was a prophet of vision. He was a prophet of vision. See Daniel? He was a prophet of excellence. He, he had excellent spirit. So now when we get in this book, because that's where we're going, people. This next 365 days, we're going to take this to a whole nother level. Why? Because guess what? I'm tired of seeing them play y'all in these churches. God said, that's enough of that foolishness. Now God is teaching his people. You know why? As I say, I ain't been to nobody Bible college. I ain't been to nobody seminary or theology. But your professor won't come out there. I bet your professor won't come out there. Because guess what? Professor don't know that book. 
professor been jibby jibby jab. And professor been teaching us some stuff, and so we run out there. And we run out there, not having a full understanding of the scriptures. Come back, Ephesians. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Ah, and the sky go open and he's gonna resurrect us. Okay, keep waiting on it. Keep waiting on it. Watch what happened to you. So, Bible. My thing is, if you tell it to me, show it to me. If you tell it to me, show it to me. Come here, Ephesians. Come here. I, 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 I got you, God. Ephesians 5 and 29. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the law, even as the law of the church. Verse 30. For we are members of his body. For we are members of his body. Hey, stop! If we're members of his body, and he's coming back for the body, so they've been telling us, then I found that out not to be true. If, we, if Wait, 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 God. Wait, God. Stop. Stop right there at that one verse, God. That's what, that what the scriptures say, God. For we are members of his body, just like Eve was a member of Adam's body, right? I got that. Okay. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. The same way Adam, Eve was of Adam, right? Okay. So if we members of his body, how is he coming back for a body that's already his body? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Help me, God. Go back, man. That he, may, that he may sanctify, set apart, and cleanse it. Who? The body. Who? The people. How? With the washing of the water by the word. The word, the water baptism, the conversion, the in Christ. Oh, 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 oh. So the body of Christ is already being established through Christ. Yes. So what's the bride's land in the 21st chapter? The new Jerusalem, the new city. Mike, you didn't read the gospel where the daddy was getting ready to put on the wedding feast for the son? I'm gathering y'all to go to the wedding. To be where? In the new city. What? In the new Jerusalem. Hold up, God. Yeah, Mike. Getting you to come to the wedding, babe. It's not that was said in the gospel. And when you came to the wedding feast back then, right? And <coughs> excuse me, in order to come in, right, Mike? You had to put on a certain attire, right? Else you wasn't coming in. They gave you with the well at the door, right? Isn't that said in the gospel, right? Yeah. Well, how you think you're gonna get in without the right attire of Christ? No spots, no blemish. Through the watering of the word, through the cleansing. Of the word to the acceptance of Christ. Say God. Ah, say me. Say God. And you went to school and you paid to tell me that foolishness? You telling me? When all you had to do is pick this book up? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So God, what is all this stuff they've been telling us, God? Ephesians 3 and 9 says, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which is the beginning of the world, had been hid in God, who created all things by Christ. Okay, God, I got you, got you. You went in the dust, you fall man, and out of the man you grabbed the woman, right? Okay. So before this world began, it was already hitting you, right? But you're revealing it through us, through Christ, right? The same thing you did with Adam, now you come with your second Adam, which is Jesus, right? 
But the church is already in Jesus like Eve was already in Adam, right? Watch this. Watch this. Verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Hold up, 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 hold up,
those that wasn't. And then he said the next, in that same verse, for the just should live by faith. But we tell you, go make a vision bowl. So you around here writing all this stuff down. Use a cold, 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 cold. That's a cold. Now that one, that's a cold. Why? Because it had nothing to do with you in a vision board. It had everything to do with the children of Israel getting ready to go in bondage. And he had to write it and let them know, say, bro, this was getting ready to happen to y'all. The same thing God is doing right now today, saying all that foolishness y'all been doing in that churches, all them pimping and all that. Say, bro, this is getting ready to happen to you. This right here, getting ready to happen to you. So running out there talking about it's going to get better, show it to me in the book. Show it to me in the book. Christ coming back for a church, show it to me in the book. Christ coming back for you, show it to me in the book. Show it to me in the book. It's nowhere in the book. It's nowhere in the book. Nowhere. Thessalonians says it's going to open up, and God himself got that covered. Just like he showed him in the 13th chapter of John. When Jesus was standing there, Jesus said, y'all heard that voice? Y'all going to hear it again. He didn't do it for me. He did it for y'all. Because he going to call y'all. Boom. That kills that lie. That kills that lie. That kills that lie. Now, on that 19th chapter, he coming for battle. He's coming for battle. That's his second coming. That's the second coming of Christ. So all this stuff they've been telling us in these churches, say, bro, been cold gang. Because the church is in Christ. But we the church. You know why we the church? Because we of Christ. And the church is in Christ. But we being gathered together to go to the wedding. Of who? The Lamb's bride. Where? Look how beautiful she is. Come on, Revelation. I'm going to wrap this up. I got, I, got, I, got, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And you think that you thought it was you? And he carried and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And in her, in her lights was likened unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Is that you? Is that you? It had a wall great and high. It had 12 gates. And the gates had 12 angels. And the name written thereon, which are the name of the 12 tribes of Israel. And on the east three gates. And on the north three gates. And on the south three gates. And on the west three gates. Or is that you? He's describing the church. Verse 14, and the walls of the city had 12 foundations and in them name and in the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. Just like you sitting around church waiting to be one of the 144,000. Cold gang. <laughs> Cold gang. <laughs> Say, bro, can somebody really start teaching us this book? Because that, Grandpa said in church, 50 years. Talking about, yeah, because I'm going to be one of the 144,000. Grandpa, you're going to be disappointed. They didn't teach you the real, Grandpa. They don't have nothing to do with you. The 144,000 are going to be here when the church is raptured up. The 144,000 is going to be here when the two witnesses are killed. The 144,000 are going to be here to preach and help the people. Grandpa, you sat in church 50 years listening to that. And you know what, Grandpa? You said, well, I got to pay my tithes and offerings because I'm going to be a part of the 144,000. Cold play, Grandpa. Cold play, Grandpa. Go back to the resurrection. We're going to walk it from the resurrection all throughout this Bible. Come out of that resurrection. We're going to go in the book of Acts. We're going to see what happened. First day, Jesus told them, y'all wait right here. Y'all going to receive power. Boom. 
Come out of that first chapter, after we're going to walk in verse by verse. Go in that second chapter, we're going to deal with the day of Pentecost. We're going to tie the day of Pentecost with the book of Exodus. Go in that third chapter, we're going to see the first miracle. We're going to see the first miracle. What was the first miracle? The man who was lame for 40 years. For the Bible say he was born. He was born at birth lame. And the Bible say he was always at the gate begging for alms. But here come Peter and John. And Peter and John said, silver and gold, we don't have none. But in the name of Jesus, get up. And the man immediately got up and went in the church. And the Bible say 5,000 people followed him in the church. But the church today, see the church today, we'll be standing around. Oh, in the name of Jesus, come out of him, demon. Get up, get up, get up. Come out of him, demon. Say, bro. All the while, God standing in heaven said, say, bro, what y'all doing? What y'all doing? Hey, man, long. I have that man there for a reason. I have that man there for a purpose. What are y'all doing? What are we trying to get this? What demon? Ain't no demon in here. I'm doing something. That one man, that was the first miracle in the early church. That one man got up, went in the church, and the Bible said 5,000. 5,000 because of that miracle. But the church today, we won't pray everything away. We, we don't know the will of God. Say, brother, y'all don't sit down with this foolishness. A bunch of foolishness in the church because we don't know the will of God. So after we come up with it, we'll set fire up. Say, bro, these people lied to the Holy Ghost. We're going to walk this book of Acts. We're going to deal with how the deacons came in the game. We're going to look at his little Stephen, how little Stephen was on trial, and he dealt with him. Then we're going to deal with this dude named Saul, and later became Paul. We're going to walk, we're going to walk the, we're going to walk the whole book of Acts because we're going to deal with the first and second journey of Paul. We're going to see how the church really got started. That foolishness we're doing today, say, bro, I don't know where they get that from. According to this book, say, bro, I don't know where they get that from. Then again, I do. One man jumps up and said, oh, well, I'm going to start backyard church and this is how we're going to believe and this is how we're going to talk and this is how we're going to say this we got to well. And then y'all follow that foolishness. Behind one man. Say, bro, get to know God for yourself. Get to understand the Spirit of God that's in you. Nobody, nobody in this world is more important than you are in the God that's in you. Say, man, when you realize how powerful you are, man, man, man. Peter and John was so powerful, the people say, who are they? Who are they? They don't know nothing. They ain't go to school, they were unlearned. But they walk and talk and spend time with Jesus. And guess what? Couldn't nobody touch him. We're gonna show how the first persecution of the church came. Why? Because John and Peter gonna go to jail. But then God gonna get John and Peter out. Then John and Peter gonna go again. But then God gonna get them out. But then Peter gonna go by himself. Then after that, Peter gonna get killed. We're gonna walk this book of Acts. And when we walk the book of Acts, and we tie it in with the book of Revelation, and then we go into all the Old Testament, y'all gonna say, oh my God, what have they really been teaching us in these churches? Bible, baby. Bible. That's one thing. They ain't been teaching us Bible. They've been teaching us what man wanted them to teach us. Cold gang. Long as we long as y'all giving, we all right. As long as y'all give it, we all right. Poor God. God going to bless you. You are already blessed. You are already blessed. Bless, baby. Don't wait till you get on that sick bed. Don't wait till you get on that sick bed and try to figure God out. Don't wait till the house burn now to try to figure God out. Don't wait till you get in that bad accident. Don't, don't wait till you lose a child or lose a... Don't wait for that. Don't wait for that. David said, before I was afflicted, before the house, before the car, before the children, before the loss of a parent, before I was afflicted, I went astray. I did anything I wanted to do before that happened. He said, but now God has dealt bountifully with me. Say, bro, don't wait till you get to that point to get to know God. Don't wait till y'all get to that point, people. For real, get to know him now and get to know him for yourself. And the only way you can know God is by experiencing him. That's the only way. The Bible says faith come by hearing. Faith come by hearing. Faith come by hearing. The Bible says every man is dealt a measure of faith. The Bible says that we have the gift of faith. Come on, man. So when they run out there with that foolishness, 
on some real talk, faith without works is dead. As a believer, don't let nobody ever tell y'all that. That's talking to a vain man. That's talking to somebody who didn't have no belief. That's talking to somebody who had vain faith. Throughout this, throughout these 365, we're going to break faith down. We're going to deal with vain faith. We're going to deal with dwelling faith. We're going to deal with saving faith. We, we're going to deal with daily faith. We're going to break all these different faiths down. Why? Because people are going to tell you to have faith. Okay, I got faith. Which one? I have faith. Which one? Faith without works is dead. Okay, I'm working my faith. I'm working vain faith. I'm working my faith. I'm working daily faith. You told me faith without works is dead. But break it down to me. But not, no, now you want to straighten it. Now you want to straighten it. There are at least nine different kinds of faith, people, on some real talk. And we're going to walk these different kinds of faith from the scriptures. Not from jibby jibby jab, from the scriptures. And every scripture I show you, it's faith. So when people run out there, man, say, this is... Uh, but you know, you know what man gonna say? You don't have no faith. You know what I say? He, he got faith. She got faith. They got daily faith. How you gonna say they ain't got faith? And they ain't that, no, that's not the type of faith that you want them to have. But you ain't never gave them an understanding. So they only use them what they have. Use the faith that works. You tell me faith without works is dead, so I'm using the faith that works. This works for me, daily faith. This works for me, saving faith. This works for me, indwelling faith. This works for me, vain faith. Different types of faith, baby. But they ain't bringing it down to us like that in the church, Pastor Mike. <laughs> I don't know why. It's all right there in the book of Romans. It's all right there in the book of Corinthians. It's all right there in the book of James. But they ain't read that part. They ain't read that. Cold guy, cold guy. For the Bible says Abraham counted righteousness. It was accounted righteousness. Why? Because he believed in the things that. Oh man, call it things that be not as though they were. But what kind of faith that was, man? We gonna walk this Bible, baby. We gonna walk this Bible, and we gonna start right there at that resurrection. Now that he has risen, how are you living? Because if man is to love his wife as Christ loved the church, say Christ on some real stuff, Jesus. Say, bro, you approve of this stuff going on in these churches? That's all I want to know. Do you approve of that? He said, if, you are, if I approved of it, Mike, you wouldn't be teaching them what you're teaching them. So that goes to show I don't approve of that foolishness, even though they're doing it. Bye. Let ah! me wrap this up. I got a funeral. I mean, I got a wedding. I got a wedding to do. I got. Me, oh Lord, Father Mike, I get in the Bible. These next 365, they, we gonna get deep, people. We are going to get deep. And I love people being bothered by Pastor Mike. What this about, Pastor Mike? What this about? Asking me all the questions. Why? Because the first 365 days, y'all was uncomfortable. You know why? Because we taught y'all, y'all couldn't talk. But Pastor Mike, yeah, I'll talk to you. I'll meet you and run it with you if you need me to. Say, Brian, on that kind of time. I ain't no better than you, and you know better than me. I ain't on that kind of time. You want to talk? Let's talk. You want to run it? Let's run it. That's why I get everybody. I better than you get anybody your number. I'm doing God's work. I ain't doing man work. Man ain't going to tell me, well, you can't say this. Man, I do God's work. Ain't no limit to doing God's work. So now, if the people won't know, the Bible say always be ready. Paul said be ready in season and out of season. In season and out of season. So if that's what Paul said, that's what the word of God said. I'm not just a hearer, I'm a doer. So if you need to know something, Father Mike, oh, what was that? Man? What's up? Yeah, okay, Father Mike. What what? Father Mike, in the, in, in the 12th chapter of Revelation, when he talks about the dragon, and he talks about the deceiver, that's the same person? Yes. The deceiver, the, 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 the deceiver, the dragon, Satan, all them people the same person. All them people the same person. This is why when we study the scriptures, we're going to get a better understanding of the scriptures. Not just, to, oh, no, 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 no. Using no one verse. See what one verse then did to y'all? See what one verse have done to you all. Mess us up. Preaching? How can they hear except they have a preacher? How can they believe in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear except they have a preacher? Okay, so when we go through the Bible... 
23rd chapter of Matthew, Jesus preached to them. He preached to them so well, came to the 24th chapter of Matthew, he questioned, they questioned Jesus. How, what will be the signs? How we would know about the ending of time? Jesus taught them. 25th chapter of Matthew, Jesus broke it down. He used the bride, he used the talents, he used the sheep, he used the goat. Jesus preached, Jesus taught, and Jesus was always breaking it down. Us today, in these pulpits, we give y'all one verse and tell y'all Mary had a little lamb. Last week I went down the street, I ran into the church and I bought the, the car, ran into the building, and the building blew up and then now I'm walking and God bless me. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, praise the Lord. And when you, freight, when you are faced with your dilemma, you fall apart. You know why? Because you don't have no word in you. You don't have no word in you. Not no cliche, not that foolishness, not that foolishness, the word of God. For the Bible say his word will accomplish that what he sent it forth to do. God, I'm in pain. I need this pain to stop. Your word say, by his stripes I'm here. Oh. For the Bible said, and the poor man cried unto the Lord, and the Lord delivered him out of all his troubles. For the Bible says, anything too hard for the Lord, say God, handle this big, handle this. Jesus told me to have faith in God. And if I speak, it's done deal. If I believe it, I'm gonna receive it. But I had to forgive, I did that, God. Okay, now what, God? Because guess what? You can't lie, and your word can return to you void. So now I have the word. Now what? I love how David said, David said the footsteps of the righteous are ordered. So if your footsteps are ordered, why in the world are you letting these people lie to you? Why? Your footsteps are already ordered by the Lord. He delighted them in his way. Though he falls, should not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholded him with his hand. Is not that what Jeremiah is saying in the 18th chapter about the potter? Come on, man. God got us in his hand. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken? No, it's seed begging for bread. For the Lord is ever merciful, and he lended, and his seed is blessed. So why in the world are you letting people play you on some real talk? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years, that's one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come to a thief as a night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works of therein should be burned up. Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening to the coming day of God, where the heavens being on fire should be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless, in account that the long servant of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom, has been given unto him, as written unto you, as in all his letters, speaking of them of these things, which are sometimes hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, unstable, rather as they do the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. You therefore be loved. Seeing you know these things, before we will, lest you also be led away with the error, of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness but grow in grace and the wisdom and love of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ to him be the glory both now forever and ever amen get a hug babe get a hug babe we're gonna be all right babe <laughs> we good we good we good people we're gonna work this Bible see these next 360 see them first 365 days God was taking us through a detox see these next 365 days like I say, nothing don't stop this 9 o'clock. Every day at 9 o'clock, I'm pressing that button. We done moved to 11 o'clock on Sunday because the church done grew. So since the church grew, we had to move it from the 8.30 to the 11 o'clock service because it's all God's doing. So now, like I say, God, say so he's taking us to another level. 
in him, not man. Because as we see, that stuff man and taught us. Cold gang. Cold gang. Cold gang, Lord. Cold gang, Mike, babe. God said, I'm going to straighten it. I'm going to straighten it now. I'm going to straighten it then. And I'm going to straighten it to come. But right now, I'm going to start with right now. I just need you, Mike, to tell them what I told you to tell them. Just like I told Jeremiah. Jeremiah, meet me at the powder house. I'm going to tell you what to tell them. But then, Jeremiah, you get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings. Get in your Bible. God got us, people. Believe you me. God, there's no way in the world I could stand here every day. I'm talking about boldly. Not, not just jibby-jibby-jabbing. Boldly. Come on, man. God said, Mike, I took you through 365 days. And every day you taught an hour, hour and a half, two hours, some days. He said, not one day. One day, a man was able to say you was wrong. And you never taught the same thing. Every day was 365 days. It was 365 teachers. And not one day. Not one day. <laughs> not one day. Not one day. <laughs> one day. With all these people that have so much Bible knowledge. And all, not one day. Man ran out there and told you you was wrong. He probably said you was crazy. And he probably said all this and that. But not one time. One time, he said, you lied. Not one. Not one. So, not that smart, people. I'm nowhere near that smart. And no, nobody in the world know that book like that. Especially when God starts turning the pages and it all lines up. Come on, man. Get to know God for yourself. The anointing of God is moving like never before among his people. And it's for those who want it. Because in that fifth chapter, we're going to tear that fifth chapter of Ephesians apart. Husband, love your wife like Christ loved the church. How am I going to love her like Christ loved the church? And I don't even know how Christ loved the church. But then she hollering about, he that find a wife, find it a good thing. Stop, babe. It ain't nothing to do with you. He that finds the anointing of God. Why? Because in the book of Proverbs, it ain't know nothing about the anointing back then. So the best thing to use was a wife. But now let's take it to the book of Ephesians. Love your wife as you love yourself. A man is not going to mistreat himself. Jesus wasn't going to never mistreat Jesus. Say, bro, but we done taught this Bible. But God, she jibby jibby jabby. Because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But God, I don't know where that excuse is at. Where's that excuse? They ain't already told you there's anything too hard for the Lord, right? Okay. Well, where I'm at? You call me any time of day. God, look. What, what, that, that's all I was waiting on. God said, that's all I was waiting on. Why? Because they already had told the people not to listen to Jeremiah. They already had told the people to go against Jeremiah. So since the majority was going against Jeremiah, Jeremiah felt some type of way. Say, Jeremiah, you work for the Lord. I work for the Lord. I ain't but one person. But the Bible say, if it's just you and God, y'all the majority. If it's just you and God, you all are the majority. So all that old jibby jibby jabby, all that noise, like I said, I ain't but one person standing there running it every day. If I'm lying, come show me. <laughs> you can't. You cannot. So leave that alone. As, my, as Mr. Spoon would say, say, Pastor the Mike, they ain't going to run out there, Pastor the Mike, because say, Pastor the Mike, you on, on point. He said, I'm old school, Pastor the Mike. I know you on point. Say, Mr. Spoon, say, bro, as God give it to me, I give it to God people. Because it hurt me to my heart to see God people get played the way they're being played in these churches. Our people say they men and women of God. Are you really? Jesus gonna say, I never knew you. Back up off. 